Welcome back. This is the beginning of Unit 9, Week 13, Lecture 28. And today we're going to talk about um, how we get energy from food and, you know, how much energy is in food. So, um, again, if we take a look at the uh, My Pyramid, Steps to a Healthier You, uh, nowhere on here does it say exactly how many servings of each of these foods um, from the food groups that you need to eat. And the reason why is because it depends on um, it depends on how much you weigh and how active you are and your age. So again, they've taken off the amount of food that you should eat, and you have to figure it out yourself by going to their website um, to calculate how much food you should need to eat to maintain your weight. Um, so when we talk about energy from food. Um, we want to think about energy in, in terms of, um, you know, how a chemist would think about energy. And so the source of, of all the energy that, um, that we take in as food comes from the sun, okay? So it's the electromagnetic radiation, um, electromagnetic radiation from the sun um, that is trapped by uh, in the chemical bonds of plants and um, so oh, the type of electromagnetic radiation that's trapped are photons from visible light okay so it's the visible light from the Sun that um, the photosynthesis in plants is able to um, harness that energy from the visible light and um, fix carbon dioxide into um, glucose and that's where the energy is stored and then it's shuttled around um, and it's used for the energy for the plant itself and then animals eat the plants um, some some animals only eat other animals but the animals they eat originally got it from the plants okay so that's where the the energy comes from in the food that we eat it's from the Sun originally um, and so when you think about um, how the energy cycles, the energy, um, it takes energy to make this reaction go. And this reaction is carbon dioxide plus water to give glucose plus oxygen. That's the famous photosynthesis reaction. And in order for this reaction to go, it's an endothermic reaction. You have to supply energy um, to the system. And so that energy, of course, comes in the form of the visible light. Okay, so <clears throat> um, that energy then gets trapped in the carbon-carbon bonds, and um, that's the energy then in metabolism is how we get the energy back out. So obviously plants are able to what we call fix carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into glucose, and then it's stored as starch and whatnot in the plant. Um, that the carbons are also, you know, converted into fats in the in the plants as well, the oils that are, that are associated with uh, plants, and then that um, energy from the plants um, is used in metabolism. So, the actual uh, cell, you know, glucose is what we need, and there's lots of other types of molecules that we take in, but our body's capable of transforming things into glucose um, to get the energy back out. So that's where the energy comes from. It's just stored in the chemical bonds. Okay? Alrighty. So, um, as it turns out, not all nutrients have the same calorie um, count. And as it turns out, um, fats have more calories per gram than carbohydrates or proteins. Uh, fats contain 9 calories per gram. That means every gram of fat um, when it's metabolized, your body can get nine calories of energy out of it. Carbohydrates, four calories, and um, proteins, also four calories per gram. And I want to uh, make a note about this unit, the calorie, capital C-A-L. That's a nutritional calorie, nutritional calorie. Um, a nutritional calorie has a capital C-A-L because it's the same thing as uh, one one nutritional calorie is the same thing as one kilocalorie, okay? And if you remember um, the, the calories, um, one calorie, by definition, with a lowercase c, 
one calorie is equal to the amount of heat it takes, amount of heat energy to raise um, the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. Remember that? So a uh, irregular calorie, uh, when we're talking about energy, um, is the amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. A nutritional calorie is actually um, 1,000 calories, um, but that would make these numbers so big, so that's why the nutritionist changed it and, and give it a capital C. It's really a kilocalorie, and they don't call it a a, a KCAL because um, they thought that would be too confusing for people. So anyway, just you guys should should know this that a nutritional calorie is the same as a thousand calories um, by this definition. Okay, anyway, so we still haven't answered the question why fats um, have more calories per gram. Well, to answer that question, we have to look at the chemical structure of whoops, of a fat. Um, here's a fatty acid right here. Fatty acid. Okay, the fatty acid is what um, gets digested. It, it's stored as a triglyceride, but then your enzymes clip it off, and then it starts chewing down um, the fatty acids. Enzymes do. Um, this is a glucose molecule, and this is a um, amino acid alanine. And um, and the reason why these two have about the same amount of calories per gram is because they have fewer carbons that can be oxidized. Uh, remember, when we metabolize food, um, we're going to take the 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 uh, fuel molecule, the fuel plus oxygen, to give carbon dioxide plus water. Okay, and as it turns out, um, since there's already so many oxygens on the glucose, and there's so many oxygens, and then nitrogen also on the carbon, then there's more carbons per gram to be oxidized in the fatty acid, that's why you can get more energy out of the fatty acid. That's why fat is such a great place to store energy because gram per gram on your body, um, your your body can, can go to the fatty acid uh, reservoirs and get energy out, okay? So that's a good thing if you're in a period of fasting to be able to store energy as efficiently as possible. And so there's more energy per gram in a fatty acid um, than in the amino acid or the um, the glucose. Okay, so that's why. So the the proteins and the sugars um, have uh, are not as an efficient way to store energy. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing for your body. It's a bad thing if you're trying to lose weight and you're eating a high fat diet. Then you're taking in you know for the serving size. There's more energy in fatty foods than in the carbohydrate rich foods or the protein rich foods.